Okay. I had a great week last week. I missed doing the live stream. Uh, it's amazing how fast you get used to doing these. Uh, but we are back and I have an exciting dessert today that I'm excited to share. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is working. So if you're here, go ahead and comment. And let me know where you are watching from while I make sure that I am getting all the comments. And okay. Oh, volume. <laughs> You got a little delay. Okay, so it looks like Facebook is working okay, and uh, fingers crossed, looks like YouTube is working okay. So today uh, we are going to make one of my favorite desserts, and that is a pistachio dessert lasagna. So I never called it dessert lasagna growing up. It was just always a uh, layered pistachio dessert. But uh, with the invention of Pinterest and food bloggers sharing all of the recipes, it's kind of turned into this thing that's called a dessert lasagna. So all dessert lasagnas have the same components. They all start with a crust. Some use uh, cookie crumbs, and so those can be no-bake or baked. Uh, mine is using a shortbread crust that we're going to make, so obviously that component of this dessert is baked and then cooled before we add everything else. The second layer is usually a no-bake cheesecake layer, so it's a little bit thicker, a little bit denser, uses cream cheese. Uh, then the second, third layer, first, second, third, third layer is some kind of pudding. Obviously in this case we're using pistachio because this is the pistachio one. Uh, and then the top layer is uh, covered with whipped topping. Now, for me, I made a no-baked cheesecake and I use whipped topping. I use fresh whipped cream. I am not a fan of the whipped toppings you can buy at the store that are made from soy. Um, I, I honestly can't stand the taste. Uh, they're a little bit too airy for me, but they are stabilized, so they hold really, really well. So one of the things that we're going to do today is to make stabilized whipped cream. Now, if you leave stabilized whipped cream out, uh, out where it can melt, it will still melt, but as long as you keep it refrigerated, it will stay stable and firm. Uh, you can actually pipe it. It's a pipeable whipped cream uh, versus a normal whipped cream, which even in the fridge is going to uh, eventually deflate, right? So this way, the gelatin that we will use to stabilize whipped cream helps keep it from deflating and help all those air bubbles in the cream from popping and turning back into a liquid. So those are the components that we're doing today. Now, obviously, you can make this into any flavor that you want. If you search on Pinterest, there are probably hundreds and hundreds of flavors. Uh, recently, I did a uh, chocolate version with using uh, Walker Shortbread Cookies as the base uh, with a sponsored video with them. Uh, this is my own shortbread recipe that we're going to be using in the base, and we're going to be using a more classic um, 9 by 13 pan. So that's the already finished crust that's cooled so that we don't have to wait for it. So we're going to start by making the crust. Oh, I can't read any of the comments because I have a pop-up. Sorry. Nope. Close the pop-up. There we go. Um, okay. Looks like comments are working uh, on both. This dessert looks yummy. Can't wait to try it. Happy Tuesday. Hello from Ontario, Canada. Um, you run a live broadcast on YouTube and Facebook with multiple cameras, click and answer questions. You're amazing. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate it. I actually really enjoy it, although it did take some getting used to. So let's get started. We are going to uh, start with a crust. So shortbread starts with butter, nice and softened butter. And we're actually going to beat this just to cream it up. I'm going to add the powdered sugar. Now you can use um, granulated sugar, but I find the powdered sugar um, dissolves a little bit faster, a little bit easier in this. but after just beating it for a little bit it comes creamy again this is why I don't uh, beat all of the dry ingredients into the butter at once I cream the butter first only takes a second then I add the powdered sugar and cream that and I don't stop until it is actually creamy not crumbly now we're gonna add the flour 
which is also then going to make this a little bit more difficult. Now you can use your stand mixer for this. We're gonna be using my stand mixer for a couple of other things in a minute, so I just decided to hand mix this because it's really not that big of a deal. It's, there's not a lot of crust. Ooh, change camera angles. All right, so now the flour. And again, kind of just go slow at first so you don't get a, um, a flour explosion. When it gets to this crumbly stage, you can um, keep mixing till it gets creamy, or you can use your hands and press it together. Either one works. Just to save time and our ears in this live, I'm going to add the pecans because I like that little bit of crunch and. We're just gonna use our hands and get in here. First, I'm just gonna get those pecans mixed through. And then if you just start grabbing your dough, it should just come right together. Right. See how that looks so good. Okay, now we're going to bring over the nine by 13 pan. And what I'm going to do now, instead of just taking this whole thing and like plopping it in in one big plop and then spreading it from there, what I like to do is break it up and kind of spread the plops out so that they're nice and even. Okay. And then that will help give me uh, get the crust even a lot faster without a lot of pressing. So our crumbs are kind of evenly spread. And then I tried to do the same thing and evenly press down and just keep going until the entire thing is uh, pressed along every edge. It should look a lot smoother by the time you get to the end. I like to push the edges down because I don't want the edges to rise up on the sides. I use my finger to come around. And again, you want this as evenly as possible. Now you can, of course, use like a measuring cup or something to press this down. But I find that when I use my hands, I can feel better if there's any imperfections or if it's like higher in one place than another. So I like using my hands. And, you know, it takes, you know, seconds to wash your hands, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so that is ready to go in the oven. And what we do is we're gonna bake this, you know how nice and even it is. And by not letting it rise up the sides, you're gonna get a nice even crust down here too. So you'll be able to see those layers better, which is what we want. Uh, anyway, so then we would bake this and bake it at 375 for about 10 to 20 minutes. And you'll notice, this is my already baked one. You don't want it to get super dark. Don't wait till the top is golden, but you'll see the edges will get golden. See how the edge is golden? And that's really what you're looking for. The bottom is totally golden. Um, but the top, if you cook it till the top is golden, your top will get too, too cooked. And nobody wants overcooked shortbread. It's already a dry cookie. You don't want it to be even drier. All right, wash my hands. And I'll wipe down the counter. Start with a clean counter for the next part. All right, so now uh, we're gonna bake the no-bake cheesecake layer. So first thing that I'm going to do is actually 
start by dissolving our um, gelatin. Oh my word. <laughs> Massive brain fart. Okay, so the gelatin that we're going to use for stabilizing the whipped cream that we're going to add to the cheesecake layer and the top layer, uh, you want to stabilize with gelatin. So that's what we're going to be doing now. I'm going to take um, about a teaspoon of gelatin and two tablespoons of cold water. Give that a little mix. And then you want to let it sit uh, so that the gelatin has a chance to bloom. So just a couple of minutes. Usually it will kind of thicken up and kind of applesaucy. Uh, typically I let it bloom for about three to five minutes. So I'm going to set that aside uh, while I bring over the mixer and get ready for the next part. Ooh. Okay. Get all the cameras back in the right place. Oh, that's shaking pretty bad now. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, now for this dessert, uh, I'm going to use the whisks uh, because I really want to get this cream cheese nice and smooth. I'm going to use my bowl scraper to keep the edges along the post and along the outside uh, nice and clean. So the one negative that can really go wrong with a no-bake cheesecake is not beating the cream cheese enough so you end up with cream cheese chunks scattered throughout the dessert. So you want to make sure that you've softened your cream cheese really well. I just put mine out in the morning and now I'm going to open it so I can get my nails to work. <laughs> <laughs> Before I'm washing my hands, everything is wet. All right, come on, open up, there we go. Um, yeah, so you wanna make sure that you beat the cream cheese portion of this really good, scraping the sides really good. Don't just rely on a bowl scraper. If you have bowl scrapers, also make sure that you get in there yourself and scrape everything, so. Okay, let's check on our gelatin. So, you can see the gelatin is no longer liquid. It, well, liquidy. It's apple saucy in texture, and that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to microwave this for about 30 seconds. You just want it to. You just want it to come to a boil. So watch it because you don't want it to boil over because it makes a mess. Usually 20 to 30 seconds. Sometimes 40, depending on the amount of liquid and gelatin that you're doing. Oh, all right. So that was only 15 seconds. When it started to boil up, this is a pretty small amount. You can see now it is totally liquid. Now, if we poured this into whipped cream warm like this, it would actually remelt the whipped cream. So anything that you might have beaten, it's going to warm it up and then it's not going to beat again. So that's why I do this first. I'm going to set this aside now and um, and let it cool down to room temperature. Now we still want it to be a liquid. We don't want it to firm up again, but we, do, we don't want it to be warm when we add to the whipped cream. So put did that first, set it aside, um, and now we're going to, if I can find the lid, there we go, uh, go back to making the no bake cheesecake. So first things first, oh, I should probably plug this in. That is always fun when you go to start to make something and you have everything in there and you push go and it doesn't actually go. All right, so we have, our cream cheese. Um, and some powdered sugar. Uh, there's the lid. I'm like, where did I put it? I swear I just had it. Um, Margaret, Tony, Mia, Debbie, hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yes, nobody wants cream cheese chunks, that is for sure. Okay, so this is the time that you want to make sure that your cream cheese is getting beaten nice and smooth. So, even though... It, for the most part, looks pretty smooth, and we have the scrapers are scraping the sides. You still want to get in there, no matter what your mixer is, hand mixer, 
the Bosch uh, KitchenAid and just really make sure that you're getting all this everything scraped off the bottom to give it the best chance possible of beating nice and smooth. And don't forget to, if you're using bowl scrapers, to scrape off the scrapers because sometimes they can also kind of build up some of that cream cheese. One more scrape and then we will be uh, ready to move on. Now you'll notice um, in my recipe I also call for sour cream and I write it as optional. That's because uh, adding the sour cream will give your no-bake cheesecake layer a little bit of a tang. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. When I do my uh, peanut butter uh, no baked cheesecake mousse. I don't like to use it. I feel like the tang and the peanut butter don't go well together. Um, I have made it in this pistachio dish with, dish with it and without it, and I like it both ways. Uh, I didn't care for it in the chocolate version, uh, so it just really kind of depends on what you're doing. I have done it with like anything a little bit ta already tangy. I tend to like it with uh, with this pistachio. It's kind of your personal choice. So I already made a batch of these desserts with it. So I'm actually going to skip the cream cheese this time uh, just to, so I can, because I'm going to have two batches and I can taste them side by side and really uh, get a more unbiased opinion and I'll have my kids try both and see what they think. So for this time, we're going to, uh, to skip the sour cream. So this is the time when we add the whipped cream into the cream cheese layer. So I'm going to take the cream cheese bowl off of the mixer and I'm going to add my smaller bowl that also has a whisk attachment. Whisk. I left the uh, whipping cream in the fridge as long as possible because you want this to be as cold as possible for the best results for quick, uh, fast whipping. Let's get all of that goodness in there. I don't want to miss anything. Okay. Now we're going to add more powdered sugar, which apparently I did not get out. <laughs> All right. Good thing I have plenty of powdered sugar in my kitchen. Um, it's a matter of finding my measuring cups. You gotta love when you can't find things after being gone for a week. Well, my one cup measuring is, I have two sets of measuring cups and I can't find an entire set. So I'm going to have to make do with this. Okay, so powdered sugar. And we don't want to forget the vanilla. And yes, I typically just use the lid. Probably not the best way to measure. I would say two te uh, teaspoon or two teaspoons. Now this, I'm making enough whipped cream to go in the cream cheese layer and in uh, and as a topping. So this is actually two cups of whipped cream. If you want to make them separately, because if you're doing your layers further apart than I'm doing my layers, uh, then you want to, would just want to do one cup of whipping cream and one cup of whipping cream and follow those directions for the stabilized whipped cream. Now because cream cheese itself tends to stabilize whipped cream, a lot of people use cream cheese for a stabilized whipped cream recipe. You don't have to stabilize the first one cup of whipped cream if you don't want to. Um, I have done both ways. I just find that I get better results when I stabilize both sets of whipped cream. So personal preference. Um, put the lid on. And let's start whipping. So this shouldn't take too... Camera didn't change. There we go. Shouldn't take too long.
this stage is when I taste it to make sure that I'm happy with the sweetness level. So just get, oops, that's not a teaspoon. I just get a little spoon out. Just to make sure that the vanilla level and the sugar level is enough. You can always add more powdered sugar and more vanilla at this stage. So don't go too heavy at the beginning, just in case you want to change. Now you can use granulated sugar if you don't have powdered sugar. Just remember that the amounts would be different because powdered sugar is more fine sugar. You actually use more of it to make the same weight. Um, but yeah, powdered sugar also can help whip up faster and be more stable. So just a thought. so you guys can see more into the bowl. Um, now somebody asked why I didn't put pistachios in the crust instead of pecans. You totally can. I just, oh, something in my throat. Hey, baby girl. Baby girl, are you out there? I guess not. I thought she was right in the other room. Um, I always have pecans around, always. Um, and I just, I thought I had pistachios, but they, um, they had gotten old, so. Uh, but yes, 100% you can use pistachios, uh, totally personal preference. Okay. <laughs> There's so much stuff, it's hard to get all the legs where I want them. All right, let's see if that helps a little bit more. Okay, so... stage when you're uh, not quite here. We were, we're trying to hit soft peaks before we add the gelatin. So. Alright, this looks good. Alright, so we have, we're at soft peaks or almost just under soft peaks, but that's okay. This is when we're going to add our liquid of gelatin that's been cooling off to the side. So I'm just going to turn it on and pour it into slow stream. quickly once you uh, add the gelatin. So we are ready. I'm just going to leave that out. Now, quick note, um, oh, hands are too wet to control anything. If you want to color any of your layers, uh, like for me, I make a St. Patrick's version of this where I dye this layer green and I dye the whipped cream layer green. Uh, you want to, because you don't want to over whip your whipped cream, and once you add the whipped cream to the cream cheese, uh, it can over whip quickly. So you'd want to add your green dye to the cream cheese mixture at this stage before you add the whipped cream. So if I wanted to do that, which I already did for the first layer, so it's in the fridge, uh, I would dye this to the shade of green that I wanted. Make sure it's whipped really good. And then I'm going to add half of the whipped topping we just made because half's going to go on top and half's going to go in here. So I just kind of mark where my halfway marks are to kind of give me an idea. And then I'm just going to plop and plop. We don't want to over mix at this point. So again, I'm going to scrape 
the sides and bottom, the blades. And just kind of lightly mix. One more time. Just to make sure I get every part of this. All right, I'm gonna take this out. Now at this stage, um, camera change. Okay. At this stage, the um, the no bake cheesecake is still fairly liquidy. It's just a little bit softer than you think of when you think of no bake cheesecake, right? But it will firm up as it sets in the fridge. So hold on, I'm gonna move the mixer out of the way. down the counter again. Bring the finish, cool the crust over. I think you guys can all imagine why you do not want your crust to be warm at this point. Come on, change cameras, there we go. All right, so. It's gonna plop. Uh, this evenly over. I'm going to make sure you get all of that luscious goodness. And then we're going to smooth it. Now, a lot of people, when they make dessert lasagnas like this, they let each layer sit in the fridge to sit up for like half an hour in between each layer. But because this no baked cheesecake layer is already fairly thick, I don't wait too long between the layers, honestly. Uh, between the pudding and the whipped cream layer is probably where I spend, let it sit the longest. All right, try to get this as evenly as possible. I find that just by turning pretty constantly, I get a much more even spread. And keep a light touch. The other note that I will make is you want to keep the sides of your pan as clean as possible, simply so that you can see the individual layers a little bit better when it's all done. So if you have gotten a little bit too messy, like I have gotten here, hold on. I had switched to the side camera. Um, or not. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I have gotten a little messy here. Now you can just leave it, it's not a big deal. Or if you are trying to be more perfectionisty, or you're gonna be taking pictures for your blog, I just take a paper towel and I just clean up the edge really fast before I um, work on the next layer. It just takes a second to do. But again, if you are not, if you're just eating this, then it's not a necessary step to the recipe. It's just a me step. And it only takes a couple seconds, so. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. All right. Okay. So you can set this aside in the fridge or you can just set it aside. I have to get the milk out anyway, so. Now comes the pistachio layer. So I have milk. 
and I have pistachio pudding. I know it doesn't look like much until you get the powder in there. And just whisk it together. So this is two packets of pistachio pudding and three cups milk. Now, if you can pour it on right now while it's super liquidy, but sometimes when you pour liquid onto something thick, like the cream cheese layer, um, it can, um, the liquid as you pour, if you, especially if you pour from a high distance, it will kind of break into your layer. So you wanna make sure that as you add this, you're pouring it like if this is your topping and you wanna pour it, you wanna keep really low to the surface so you don't have any height of that pour coming in and destroy your layer. Plus, if you just wait 30 seconds to 45 seconds, this will totally start to thicken up. It is already a lot thicker, check this out. See how much thicker that that already is? Now pistachio pudding has always been my favorite pudding, bar none. It's the best, which is why I tend to make um, this dessert lasagna and pistachio. It's my number one dessert lasagna flavor for that reason. All right, it's already a lot thicker. Another reason that I like to wait until it's a little bit thicker before I pour it onto the topping is um, if it's too liquidy and you let it set that way, all of the pistachio chunks of nuts will fall down to the bottom, where if you keep stirring this until it's thickened up a little bit, you're going to be able to plop it into on top of the cream cheese mixture, and because it's already starting to thicken and thicken and hold its shape, uh, it will hold the nuts within the layer. Does that make any sense? All right, while I'm waiting for this to thicken up just a little bit more, I'm gonna answer a couple questions. Sue, you think you fainted when my, you said my pistachios went bad? I know, I bought them for another recipe and then I didn't use them and then I went to get them. I, do you like shells on or shells off pistachio? I like buying the shells off because I hate shelling them, but I find that the shell off ones tend to be brown. They don't have that glorious green color and they tend to go bad a lot faster. But then when I buy the shell on ones, then I like kill my fingers opening them up. So I had bought some shell off ones and I just didn't use them right away. So there's that. Um, uh, Regina, hi, Rudy. where did I get my mixer with the different attachments? Um, it's a Bosch Universal Mixer. Um, I will respond to your comment later when I have some free hands and I will uh, add a link to the Bosch site. Um, it's amazing. They tend to have sales around Christmas time and around Mother's Day. So there should be a sale coming up in the next month. I will keep you guys posted. Um, and then I, yeah, I just have, I don't have all the attachments, but I have a lot of the attachments. This smaller bowl, this is actually from the shredder slicer. So there's a shredder slicer that sits on top of this and I shred all of my cheese fresh for all my recipes with this. And I love that whisk attachment because it's a smaller whisk. And so it whisks up whipped cream much faster. Okay. Let's check this out. Look how thick it has already gotten. So this is the perfect time to add it because we don't want it to set completely. We still want it to be uh, movable. All right, so here's our cream cheese layer. And we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're going to add plops. Now notice, I'm coming in pretty low with my plops. I'm not just, uh, you know, shaking down. Cause again, I don't want to disturb that layer before since I didn't let it set completely before I'm adding the pudding layer. Now, again, you can wait like uh, 30 minutes to a couple hours between your layers. No big deal. But I just figure as I start making something, I just like to finish making it. Just a personal preference. All right. So as you can see, this is still in a liquidy enough form that it's uh, gonna be easy to plop and it's gonna be easy to spread as well. So I just tried to add this as evenly as I can, just like all the other layers that we have done today. And then um, spread. And again, I try not to put a lot of pressure as I'm spreading. and I'm constantly turning my pan to keep everything nice and even. And you can see how those pistachios are staying near the top. They're not just settling to the bottom. So hopefully that makes sense why I do it that way. Okay. Mm. 
really the best part of all of this is that I get to lick all the layers. I already licked the no-bake cheesecake layer. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. And I'm going to clean up my sides. Again, it's not a step that is necessary. I just happen to be retaking pictures for the blog <laughs> when I'm done with this because my pictures are so old. They were taken from Thanksgiving years ago, back when I still lived with my ex-in-laws, with my ex-husband. And um, they were taken like kind of late at night and so they're a little bit noisy and they're not great quality. And anyway, I love updating old shots. Okay, so now I'm going to refrigerate this. Um, actually, first I'm going to add plastic to the top. So a word of warning, when you add plastic to the top, try to get it to stick on one side of the pan before you pull it across the other side and keep it tight so that it doesn't fall into your pudding mixture. Nobody wants that. Now, for the final whipped cream layer, we've, oh, oh my word, camera, <laughs> change. All right, hold on, my touch screen is having problems and it is not wanting to change cameras. Okay, now we have already made um, the final whipped cream layer, it's stabilized, uh, stabilized whipped cream to add to the top. Now, I tend to let the pudding set a little bit more before I add the whipped cream because you do want the overall dish to set before you serve it. So for that one, I will wait a little bit longer. Now I already pre-made one, so we're at this stage and we are ready to go. But the one that I pre-made, I actually uh, dyed the cream cheese layer green. And so we're also going to dye the whipped cream layer green as well to make this seasonally more pistachio-y colored and to make it all green. So it works for St. Patrick's Day. So really fast before I bring that first one out, bring the mixer back for just a second. Add a little bit of dye. So, there we go. Now you don't want to um, let stabilized whipped cream sit too long. So, oh, where's my beater? So, if you are making all these layers really far apart, I would recommend doing um, fresh whipped cream by the time you get around to this layer. Again, I made a double batch because I knew I'd be covering one that I made previously. Oh, I dropped that in with everything else. I'm talented. All right. Now I ran out of green dye, so I'm using a little bit of yellow and a little bit of navy, or yellow, navy. Oh, there we go. Oh, wrong camera. Now always just go a little at a time because you can always add more dye. <laughs> Scraping the sides just to make sure that we get that dye incorporated everywhere. pistachio -y color. I will say one thing that I didn't think through very well was um, um, dyeing this green. In my mind it was like a darker green, a medium green, and a lighter green, but I added a bunch of dye to the cream cheese layer and it didn't really get much darker, so they're pretty, all layers are pretty much the same color, so you might not want to do this. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> so you can't really see the difference in my layers. Hold on. Let's see if you can kind of see it in the side shot. Um. Oh. That's right. 
Ugh, oh my word. Okay. You can kind of see there's the cream cheese layer and there's the pudding layer. <laughs> They're very similar in color. But it was actually getting late and I was running behind and I needed to get, move on, get on with the show. So at least I think this will be a slightly lighter color. Probably should have added a little bit more yellow. Anyway, so again, we're going to Pull up. And then spread. And there should be about two cups left after you split the stabilized whipped cream in half or if you're making a single batch because it should double in size. We started out with two cups of whipped cream, so it should have made four. We split it in half, so there should be about two cups. I'm going a little gentler this time around because I didn't quite get this made as early as I wanted to today. So my pudding is still just a little on the runny side. Now, if you want this final layer to be thicker, you can of course whip up more whipped cream, right? Um, I tend to like my layers starting on the thick side and getting thinner as each layer goes. So it's a personal, it's a personal preference. on this side. I'm trying to spread it out without totally destroying that pudding layer. <laughs> when you're out of town and you come back into town and it's daylight savings and you're doing a live stream and your kitchen hasn't been cleaned in a week, you tend to get a little bit behind. So anyway. Okay, but we are making it work. So that layer is all spread out. Now of course you can, um, because this is your final layer, you can uh, leave it like this. It's a little bit plain. You can like come in here to your whipped cream layer and make little swirls or divots or anything you want. Or more traditionally, you can just sprinkle a bunch of stuff on top, right? So that is what we're going to do. Oh. Typically when I make this dessert, I sprinkle uh, more pecans on top or chopped, uh, chopped pistachios. And I also will sometimes take um, shortbread cookies and crumble them up and sprinkle them on the top as well. But for this St. Patrick's Day version, I have some St. Patrick's Day sprinkles. So that is what we are going to do. Come on. But first, I'm going to Clean the sides one more time just because I tend to make a mess when I'm spreading and there is whipped cream all over the place. This is more just for cleanliness, not making a mess, than it is for the layers to be pretty since there's not really anything else going on top of this. There's just whipped cream everywhere. All right, so Actually got these last year and then never used them on anything so all right now the higher you plop from the more deeply embedded the sprinkles are gonna get where the lower you sprinkle from the more your toppings will um, kind of stay on top so kind of depending I don't want mine to be too embedded so I try to sprinkle from fairly low down but the other thing to think about is when you sprinkle from low down, you tend to also get more um, chunks of sprinkles because you tend to kind of plop a little bit. Where if you sprinkle from, uh, oops, I touched the wrong thing. When you sprinkle from really high up, your sprinkle spreads more and so you get a more even sprinkle. That's why like Emeril, when he cooks, he always like sprinkles his spices in from up high with his bam because he gets a more dispersed sprinkle where if, if you up, add your spices to the pot really down low near your spices you tend to get clumps of spices so there is a reason for that fancy schmancy um, sprinkling going on Ooh, I'm actually really liking this mm. 
<laughs> I like sprinkles. Sprinkles are fun, especially rainbowy, colorful, big plops of sprinkles. All right, and just like that, we have a St. Patrick's Day dessert lasagna. And you could, of course, go with all golds. I also have like some uh, gold balls of various sizes, medium. And look at my mini ones, they're so cute. Or of course, there's just like gold sanding sugar. And all of these things will work if you don't have a mix or you don't want to buy a mix. Uh, you can create your own. All right, uh, let's see if you can see our three layers. I didn't clean this one very good. There we go, this one's better. So here you can see the cream cheese layer, the pudding layer, and the whipped topping layer. All right, so that is it for the recipe. Uh, I'm going to slice into this and put it on a plate, but again, it hasn't set as long as I would typically like to leave it. Um, so we might not get that really, well, to be fair, they're all the same color too. So we might not get a really pretty differentiation anyway. So plate, plate, and spatula, and knife. Okay. Wish me luck. This is going to be interesting. Now I tend to do three by five and get 15 slices. Of course, depending on how many people you have coming over for uh, dessert or celebration or just members of your family, you can cut um, different amounts. Now the one thing you just wanna make sure that you're doing is cutting all the way through that crust. And then I also clean the knife between every cut. And if you don't feel that you went all the way through the first time, just go back in again. Now the first slice out is not always the prettiest. In fact, it's really the prettiest. So if you are serving a lot of people, I would take out those first three slices. <coughs> Sorry, I need some water. <coughs> uh, put them aside to, for yourself or for your family later, and then every slice from after that should be a nice, pretty slice. Um, just a note for those of you who like to serve your food to guests and be impressive. All right, let's see if this works. Wish me luck. Oh, look at that jiggle that still has in there. Definitely needs to set a little bit more. Now, I also get asked a lot about the no-bake crumb crusts. Now, I don't recommend the no-bake crumb crusts. And here is why. I can tell that this is going to need a little help coming out. There we go. Hmm. Tend to... I tend to take it the back side of a butter knife and you can clean those sides up. Oh man, that tastes so good. Yes, I'm already eating. So again, this is a little droopy. It hasn't quite set as much as I would typically like, but it is still going to be delicious. All right, so before I take a bite, side note. The reason I like to cook my crusts, even if I'm doing a cookie crust, a friend of mine asked me the other day, she said, I made a crumb crust, so graham cracker crumbs, Nella wafer crumbs, Oreo crumbs, cookie crumbs, little sugar, little butter, melted, pat it into the bottom of your cheesecake pan or one of these pans, and then a lot of people just freeze them and then pour their no-bake cheesecake right on top of that and serve it that way. My problem with that is the crumb crust never comes together even though you've frozen it and it's firm, the second you cut into it, it gets crumbly. And I don't like that. So I always bake, even my crumb crusts, because uh, it, as it cooks in the oven, it comes together a little bit better and it's firmer. has a better crunch on the other side, which I like to combat the softness of the cream cheese mixture. And, um, hey buddy. And uh, it, it holds itself together better. It doesn't stay crumbly. So personal preference, 
Some people are no bakes. Some people are half bakes. I, I bake the crust. Don't bake the rest, right? Um, so there's my little thing. Okay. Time for the bite. Man, this has gotten even droopier. So I love... Come on, camera. Focus. There we go. I love this shortbread crust. It's the crust that I use at the bottom of quite a few of my dishes. My pecan pie crust is a little is similar to this. All right, so I can't really see the layers, but. Mmm. That is so good. So this is the one. Mmm. I added the sour cream to the cream cheese layer of this. And I really do like that tart effect. I don't know if my kids are going to like it, which is why I made the two versions so that we can taste test and try and see what we think. But I do like the sour cream added to it. I will say, if you're going to add the sour cream to it, um, be careful once you add the whipped cream that you don't overmix it because it will get more liquidy with the addition of that sour cream. Also, make sure that you're using full fat sour cream. None of that light stuff. And if there's any extra liquid in your sour cream, don't stir it back into your sour cream. But if you open your sour cream lid, there's extra liquid, pour that out to keep your sour cream nice and thick. That will definitely make a difference. I have had people respond to me with some of my dips or my other recipes going, it turned out too liquidy, what did I do wrong? Usually that's why. Low fat ingredients are always gonna be runnier, so you're gonna have to add more thickener um, or uh, mixing back in liquids that have separated in the fridge. So. Don't do either of those things. Okay, I am done with this. I will see you next week on St. Patrick's Day. I have no idea what I'm going to be making. Um, I'm debating if I'm going to do something St. Patrick's Day-y or if we're just going to skip right over that and move on to some spring recipes just because I've kind of done all my St. Patrick's Day recipes. Um, I, uh, but... I will think about it. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'm going to stay on for a couple minutes and catch up on comments because I have been talking a mile a minute and I have not been keeping up with those very good. So for those of you who are ready to go, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week, uh, Tuesday at 3.30 Pacific or 6.30 Eastern time. Hope you guys all survived the change in time. Um, and thanks again for watching. Uh, Sudine, thank you. You are so welcome. Looks perfect from here. So glad that you like it. Um, very beautiful. Thank you. You have no problem reserving three slices for yourself, right, Sue? I just get a big plate, put those three slices on there, hide it in the back of the fridge somewhere. Um, I'm so organized. Oh, thank you, Sue Jean. You do not want to see that side. After a live stream, it's totally organized before the live stream, but by after the, li uh, the live stream, I'm just throwing stuff over, and that whole side of the kitchen is just a huge mess. I do like to be organized in my cooking. All other aspects of my life are kind of messy, because I like... I like to see things. If I could have open cabinets, I totally would. Back to when I'm not cooking videos, my cabinets tend to be open because I like to be able to see everything, to be able to find everything uh, down to earth and educate. Sue, you are like my favorite person right now. You are telling everything about myself that I like. This is my goal to be. So thank you so much. You're like making my day. Um, Regina looks gorgeous. Thank you so much. Uh, Bro Baker, hi. Good to see you again. Perfect green. I just love this shade of green. My friend Jill tells me I'm not supposed to wear it, but I like it anyway. Right, Jill? Um, but I like the fact she's not perfect. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> I'm definitely not perfect, and I'm glad that you guys are okay with it. <laughs> um, you like the layering. You want to taste that cheese, right? You love the sprinkles. Aren't they pretty? I found them last year. These are just called fancy sprinkles. I am always looking out. I have... Okay. I, uh, my name is Ashley, and I'm addicted to sprinkles. I have, you know those 12-gallon buckets you get at Costco that are like this big, 12 gallons? I have two full of sprinkles from um, uh, sanding sugars to balls of all shapes and sizes uh, to jimmies to sprinkle mixtures to holiday-themed sprinkles. Like, it's bad. And then I'll, I'll, I keep buying more. <laughs> I'll be at the store, and I'll see something cute, and I'll buy more. And some of them, like this one, have never even been opened. I have so many. It's a problem. Unless I need them. And then I always go down to find the one I need. I'm like, oh, of course I have little itty-bitty hearts. And I go down, and I didn't have little itty-bitty hearts. I had little itty-bitty stars. So then I have to go buy little itty-bitty hearts. It's a problem. But it's a good one to have. I have a lot of sprinkles. Um, I'm glad that you're addicted to them, too. Could you put in the green uh, before you set it aside when this mixer is still messy? Um... 
my mixer never really got cleaned. It was always messy, but yes, you can add the green. Again, I just would be careful not to add, um, not to add the green once you have mixed that, the cream cheese mixture and the whipped cream mixture together. It's more of like, most recipes say fold them together. I'm just too lazy to like take out the thing and get on my spatula and carefully fold, which is why I just kind of pulse it a couple times and then scrape the bottom and pulse again. Um, so just make sure you've added the green dye already because you don't want to mix, you don't want to overmix once you've put those two components together. But yes, you can add the green dye anytime you want beyond that. Um, wish you had the recipe for pudding is you don't have pistachio pudding in Australia. <gasps> that makes me so sad. Pistachio pudding is by far my favorite. I will look for how to make your own pistachio pudding because it's amazing. I do make my own pistachio paste. If you go to my website, ashleymarie.com, I have a pistachio cheesecake recipe on there. I love pistachios. And um, in that, I make my own pistachio paste. And I bet we could make some pistachio paste in with vanilla pudding, and that would work really well for this. Or you could even mix the pistachio paste into the no-bake cheesecake layer instead and just use vanilla pudding um, aside. But yes. Or if you can find pistachio paste, of course, you can buy it. I will say pistachio paste is not this nice fake green color that pistachio pudding is. It's more of a like actual pistachio green color. Um, but you know, that's what food dye is for. Um, makes total bad. Shells off is faster to eat. I know. You like to toss chocolate chips in yours. <laughs> um, let's see. Thank you so much for the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome, Regina. Seriously. I adore mine. Uh, nice purple hair. Really? Today it's, I would say blue. But yes, I switch around from purple to blue to pink all the time. My hair is always a different color. Although look, look how much of my natural hair is here. Is. This is my natural hair color. I haven't seen my, my eight-year-old. His favorite colors are black and green. And he's always asking me to go back to my natural hair color because he has never seen it. Since the moment he's been born, I have had full color from roots down. So now that I'm growing up my hair, uh, I've been trying to keep it healthier and growing out faster, so I've been letting my roots grow a lot longer. And you guys, I have, I don't know if you can see, I have so much, I guess not because it's in focus, I have so much gray. I had no idea. I think three years of trying to get divorced <laughs> will do that to anybody, but I call it glitter. I have very glittery hair now that I didn't have last time I had my natural hair color. So, anyway, sorry, off topic. Um, you love make sure I sent to you. Um... I think I'm caught up over on, I think I'm caught up on YouTube. Let me know if I somehow missed, if I missed yours. Uh, let me know. Other than the spammer, who I'm not going to respond to. Um, okay, over on Facebook. Jill, you can come by. I have two batches. Come eat whatever you want. Uh, Kimber, it's so good to see, see you. Um, I have moved. I've lived in seven states and Japan and moved over 35 times. So I have friends from all over the country, like in real life friends, not just you guys. Um, so it's always fun to see when they hop on and I get to, you know, connect with them slightly over the interwebs. Uh, your daughter says you have a sprinkle addiction too, Sherry. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Uh, Kathy, my aunt, hello. Glenna Faye, oh my word, so many family and friends are watching today. You guys, usually it's just me and... And, and my interweb recipe people. It's always fun, and it's people I know in real life. Tony from Sydney. Mia from St. Peter's, Missouri. We have people from all over Winds. Jackie from Winds, Windsor, Ontario. And Deborah from Camden, Missouri. Dang, we've got people from all over the place today. Anyway, uh, happy week. Happy St. Patrick's Day in one week. Let me know if you make any of my St. Patrick's Day recipes or any of my other recipes for that matter. If you share them on social media, don't forget to either tag me, Ashley Marie Cakes, or use the hashtag Make Some Awesome. I'll follow that along and I will share what you have made um, on my, my Pinterest, <laughs> Pinterest, on my Instagram stories. I love seeing when you guys make them. Um, I was wondering if you guys would be interested in doing some kind of monthly challenge. I would start it off at the beginning of the month with a video, give you guys a challenge, um, and see how you guys do. Um, anyway, either way, I will see, hello, uh, Cindy, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Bye. If I can get